good weekend, everyone. I hope you're all doing amazing so far this week. John Henry here, SSFTG. Welcome to the video. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome, my friend. I hope to earn your like and subscription today. Welcome to the Weekend Upland Report, where we take a bit of time to discuss what's going on in the Upland Metaverse from more of an analytical perspective. How is the Upix economy doing? How is each market sector doing? Spark values and taking a look at some of the structure side of things. There's a little, there's a few changes on the structure side of things, making it a little bit more difficult to track. Might need to do some updating on that side of things, but going through and looking at what's the best deal and what's the worst and a lot of the important information that a lot of people overlook that can be the difference between success and failure. If you want to join all of us in the Upland Metaverse, make sure to swing over to discover.upland.me slash SSFTG or click the promo link in the description below and that'll get you started in the Upland Metaverse with 6,000 Upix to get going. Plus, if you decide to invest some cash into the game, you also get a monster 50% bonus to your first purchase with a cap of 50,000 Upix, so you definitely don't want to miss it. Of course, we can't kick things off without talking about or promoting the Woodhood merch store. 50% of all of the profit goes towards our chosen autism charity of the month. For the month of July, we're focusing on the National Autism Association. Check out what we have available, cop some sick looking merch, look amazing, and you get to help an incredible cause along the way. Now, really quick before we kick things off, we had one of our community targeted structure builds from the Woodhood complete, and that means that we've got to draw some names, we've got to do some uh, some Upix giveaways and all that fun stuff, and it looks absolutely incredible. I love this dark gray uh, on that light, uh, anything high contrast I'm a big fan of. Right across the street from the white on gold, man alive, this is starting to look like a really, uh, really cool street down here. As far as the builders on this one, we had a total of 21 spark on the stake with 36 total people staking on this one. Uh, out of them, the largest one goes to Decker Gibbs at 7.51 spark, but he wasn't alone in, in really pushing a lot of spark into this one. We had a bunch of people that were very close to one, uh, if not a little bit over one. Ocho 1937 pushing almost four. There's a lot of community effort going on with this one, and I mean, it finished off pretty quick, all things considered. I think it was about 10 days. Absolutely. Absolutely nuts. So from this list that makes it a lot easier because all I have to do is copy these names over, excluding myself. We don't want to give myself the prize there. Then we can jump over into the wheel of names and this will give us, let's shuffle it a couple times. Actually, let me sort it first. Make sure I don't have any names on here twice. There shouldn't be, but I've, uh, I've been known to, uh, you know, be human every once in a while. Okay, good. Let's shuffle it up a couple times. So what we're doing is we're drawing for the next name to be added towards our targeted staking. So uh, from here, once we have a name drawn, we'll be able to look through the list see if they have a property within the woodhood if they do see if it's building if they have a building that is building on there or a structure that's building however you want to say it that will be added towards our targeted list so that way when we move down our list and their name comes up we target their structure and we can finish it off so with all of that said let's pick our winner and see if they uh, if they have a property so let's go on in here who's our winner Oh, Doombot 75. Holy moly, that was close. Okay, so now that we have, and I'm, I'm pretty sure this one's okay, but now we got to double check the name, make sure that they have a property in the Woodhood, make sure that it's building, all that fun stuff. Let's double check quick. Super easy to do. All we have to do is go into upixland.me and we'll go over into Detroit. We'll check the neighborhood, Sherwood Forest. And then what we can do is check for the owner, Doombot75. Makes it really nice and easy. And as we can see here, Doombot has been a busy, busy robot just building like crazy over here. Two completed structures and two in progress. Absolutely amazing. So what we want to do here, because we've got two different ones in progress, um, I want to see what their progress is. Like if one's going to be done in, a, in three days, it's not going to make much sense. So let's see which ones we've got going here. All right, so we've got the first one on the list here, 19619 Roslyn Road. And if we look at the overall structure, this one has 375 days. So that one's got a ton of time. Let's double check the other one here. What was this? This was uh, 619 we just did. So 519. Let's do this one next. Jump on over here and see what this one's looking like. Okay, and this one's got a bit more progress done, but still 154 days. So uh, this one actually might be kind of cool. We, we have a little bit of a choice. We can either finish off the one that's already kind of in progress, or we can kind of go through and, and see, let's see, point two. Which one do they have more spark staked on? I feel like it makes more sense to finish off the one that's closer to being done. But at the same time, which ones do we have on the list here? going ahead of it. Well, either way, uh, we've got our winner and we know that Doombot definitely has it all uh, all locked and loaded. I think it would make more sense to target the one that's farther away for now, just so that 
there's time by the time we get to that one, the other one might already be completed. So I'll add the one that's a little bit further away, the one at 619 to the list, and then we'll, uh, we'll get that going for target three. All right, there we go. So our new number one target, target number one is going to be 19355 Parkside Street with CMAVs. Uh, there's already like two or I think it's already down to like three days or something like that. Let's double check here real quick. Uh, CMAVs, where? 19355 Parkside. Yeah, what's this at? Four days and four hours already. Uh, so this one is definitely winding down and I've got to do another check on here because the last time I looked there were only eight people and now there's 35. So I've got to do some updating here and there's Decker Gibbs, man, rocking that spark. Of course, along with that, speaking of which, because the uh, Decker was the largest spark contributor, we also have our largest spark donator reward right it's kind of like a bounty if you will and it's based on the overall amount so 7.51 means 7510 upix is heading towards decker gibbs as well so let me get that taken care of here let's go in and do our player search decker gibbs there you are i'm probably gonna have to put in the code right let's put how much was it again 7510 that's what it was 7510 send yep let's get that going there's the code thing. Uh, okay. Good. All right. There we go. So we got that one all taken care of as well. Congratulations, my friend. Thank you for all of the spark uh, and everything else. I mean, absolutely nuts. The, the amount of time uh, that these are being built in is absolutely absurd and just goes to show you the power of community. All right, so with that out of the way, we have our first news announcements going in from this past week. Obviously, July 12th, kicking the week off with our July standard challenges. This one's kind of cool, though, because not only is there an Upix reward, there's a Spark reward, too. Very, very cool. And it's not just a small Spark reward. I mean, 0.1 Spark for rank 1. I, I mean, that's not bad at all. And even some of the other ones, there's quite a few all the way up to 50 people all the way out to 0 0.01. Really cool to see not only Upix rewards, but Spark rewards coming out for all of them. Uh, Rising Star, if you're not familiar with what these are, these come out every month. Rising Star measures the player who completes the most collections during the week. Great Start measures the visitor, and the terminology is very important, the visitor who had the most unique sends to their property. And then there's People's Champ measures the number of unique sends by a player to visitor properties. So important wording there but those are all of the rewards and now some of them even have spark really really cool to see this is one that i am super super pumped about because these are absolutely incredible we've got some big names in there our very own c mavs and a few others uh really really cool to see these show up but this is the master builders contest and these are going through some of the structures and everything uh that are now implemented within the game and what they're all about uh, the master builder contest structure models if you're not familiar with these, make sure to go over to the contest update because all of these models are in here. They look absolutely incredible. Uh, but more importantly, from the builder's aspect and where they're able to be built. First off, we've got Bakersfield. Let me make sure that we can actually see this. There we go. Uh, we've got Bakersfield, which has the Craftsman House, and that is a 1700 spark hour commitment minimum spark 0.15, expected living units one. So as we're going down the list, make sure that you know where these are so you can build these. You've got Brooklyn, Chicago, Cleveland, lots of really, really cool structures that are able to be built in here. Unfortunately, there aren't any for Detroit, so we can't build any new ones in the wood hood, but say la vie, some of these do look absolutely amazing. I would strongly encourage you to take a look at some of these and possibly even get some of these built. I've already seen uh, a few of these up for sale too, so you might even be able to pick some up on the cheap. Just taking a look at some of these different models real quick to highlight some of my personal favorites. The Hollywood Hills Luxury one, holy moly, this looks awesome. Definitely one of my favorites. You got the solar panels on there, ultra modern. Uh, CMABS has the other one, the, oh, I mean, look at this tower. I believe this one's for Kansas City. Looks absolutely incredible. We've got this one as well. Now, CMABS, I think, really, really nailed this one because this just absolutely incredible aesthetic on this the brickwork and the style and everything oh man i love it and then oh oh man now for those of you who know my style or if you kind of picked up on the uh, on the other one that we were just talking about here the hollywood hills luxury this contemporary house by gobby oh, holy moly yes please um take a look at some of these models they are incredible and then, of course, we go into Spark Week. If you haven't been able to tell by all the USD deals coming in, we'll go into that in a little bit here. Uh, but July Spark Week is coming up starting on Monday, July 18th. 
along with being able to purchase spark and all of that fun stuff definitely highly valuable especially with all of these new structures and everything gonna be really cool to see but you also have the level up reward so if you've been waiting to level up next week or well I guess tomorrow is the time to start doing that because that's when you get all of those extra bonus perks and they are a big deal going from director to executive it is, is an example is 1.2 spark that's nuts, right? I mean, look at the values. 1.1 Spark is $460. So just leveling up during Spark Week, not only do you get the $460, but you get the additional 0.2. So, I mean, you're locking it. It just, it, you, this is why you wait for Spark Weeks, right? So if you've been waiting, it's coming. A really, really cool one is the Great Racetrack Challenge, and we have been, fortunately enough, we've been blessed to be able to buy a, an SUV, the one that I wanted too, the Orange Beast, although my track times with the URL have not been very good. Uh, they, it's really cool to be able to race around, and now it looks like they're looking to expand out to yet another racetrack, and really cool the way that they're doing it, because they're doing it based on community submissions. There are a few racetrack requirements. It has to be no more than two and a half miles long, which is the same as all of the others. Uh, be a loop with the same start and finish line. Not have a start and finish line that is in an intersection. Be entirely in San Francisco. Be a single linear path. For example, branches or forks aren't allowed. So again, it's still an alpha. They're still getting things simplistic and getting things going. Don't make it too crazy yet. And then not contain any offensive or suggestive content that is, I mean, common sense stuff, right? Uh, submission and all of that. Make sure to get those received by Wednesday the 20th and get those all in. Uh, and if you need more info on all of that, it's taken care of there. Really, really awesome way to get into the racing scene. And not only that, but the cool part of this is the reward. You get to possibly be the winner of this beautiful SUV, which again, I'll show you in a little bit because I've got one myself and they are really, really fun to race around in. Mine's the orange one. My son absolutely loved the blue one. Really, really cool. And the fact that you could win one of those by submitting, uh, you know, you can, and again, you can pick the orange, the blue or the violet and you can win one by submitting a racetrack. How awesome. Talk about making history within the Upland metaverse. And now we get to jump over into the market analytics side of things here. Now, as far as last week, it's going to be more last time. There's been a lot of delays and a lot of things going on with the YouTube schedule, trying to get a little bit more back to normal. And this is one of the first steps here. So there's going to be a bit of a time gap from the last price on there. Uh, but that said, once we get beyond this and get back into a more of a normal routine, if you will, uh, it should be pretty straightforward from there. As far as the overall transactional volume, we're sitting at 1.721 billion. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we were sitting over two. This is in lieu of the fact that we've got Rio right around the corner. We had the launch, or well, I guess partial launch? I don't know, like of uh, Vegas. <laughs> uh, we had cars in between there. And a lot of people have just, they're sitting on Upix and all of these things that they're not really sure what to do with. And now we've got Spark Week and everything else. There's a lot going on, and once we have more definitive info on when Rio is actually coming out, there's been a lot of content coming out about it, but no dates. Once we have an actual date, that's when we can start seeing a lot of things moving around. Rio is going to be a big one, because to me, I'm kind of looking at it like a genesis city of the international perspective. We had San Francisco, which is the genesis of all of Upland, but then we're moving into an international perspective time scale and that is kind of like Rio is genesis of international I think it's going to be a huge huge big big sink that a lot of people are going to be looking into for sure it's going to be one of those that I think obviously is going to sell out almost immediately but along with that we're going to see a lot of very very interesting price movement within that that gives us a lot of clues as to what people are actually looking to do were people waiting for the international and kind of feeling it out they dumped all their upics there are they more into the racing scene or are they still waiting a lot of answers when we get that real launch. As far as unminted properties versus minted properties, last time around it was 538,598. This time it's 500,000. 214. Just above that half a million. That's a difference of a drop 7.126%. So again, that's last time. We've had a bit of time inside of there, but within that, we've also had a lot of new properties added too. So it's, it's kind of interesting to see that it still sank by 7.126%. Makes me kind of curious. Well, like when, when is Rio going to be launched? And then we can go on to the zone by zone analysis. Of course, it helps if I'm in the right place. You'll notice that it does, uh, it does look a little bit different. So funny, funny story here with Excel. When you delete one of these little tabs on the bottom here, you can't just control Z that back. 
it doesn't come back. It doesn't work that way. When you delete it, it's gone. Uh, I accidentally deleted the entire tab, so I had to rebuild the entire thing. <laughs> it's been one of those uh, one of those last couple weeks, really. Anyway, so over onto the Bakersfield side of things. Again, all of these prices that we're going to be looking at are over several weeks now. So we are going to be looking at a big span of time here when we're looking at the overall movements. And we're going to see some very interesting things with that. Because a lot of these have had some pretty drastic pullbacks in USD and UPEX. Not just Bakersfield, but a lot of different areas. Notice the ones that are staying consistently bullish or strong, though. It's kind of interesting. Before we jump into that, though, of course, Bakersfield is the first one up the floor is sitting at $8 last time around. This time it's sitting at $5.69. That is a current change down 28.88%. The previous UPEX floor, 9,800, now sitting at 8,698. That's down 11.24% with an arbitration value, or an or arbitrage value, sorry. Before I get corrected on that one, Tom, I can hear it coming already. The arbitrage value sitting at 3,008. Because there's been so much movement on all of these different ones, and a lot of these have some pretty big ups and downs, I'm not going to break down every single collection because there's all pretty much all down. The ones that are up are going to be relatively obvious because it's probably going to be the only one in the list. In this case, it would be Chester Ave, which is doing incredibly well on the exclusive side, up 30%, while everything else is down 20, 30, 40%. Uh, again, keep an eye on the ones that are actually doing well. You'll find a lot of interesting correlations there. Then jumping on over into the Bronx, the last time around the floor is at $11, now $6.90, down 37.27%. However, the UPEX floor is staying stable at 12000 across the board there. That being said, out of a lot of them, Bronx on the UPEX side especially has done very, very well once again. That was one of those a few weeks ago that was pumping really, really aggressively, and it doesn't look like it's really stopped. It just kind of keeps on going. Bronx seems like it's a really healthy market right now. Brooklyn next up on the list last time around was $8.88, this time down to $5.39, down 39.3%. The UPEX floor down 16.84% from $9,980 to $8,299. That is an arbitrage value of $2,909. Notably, once again, on the UPIC side of things, the rare and ultra-rare collections seem to be doing relatively well or stable. Again, keep note. Oh, and man, it's been a little bit of time, huh? But we're back over into Chicago. We're back again. And with Chicago, the overall UPIC side of things doing relatively well. The USD floor going from $4.60 down to $3.99. The UPIC floor, $6,190 up. Hmm up to 6,300. What's interesting about this is this is another one of those cities that's had a more recent update, right? They had that more recent relaunch, so to speak, however you want to call it, with some of those properties that were relaunched again, and some of them were in heavy collections, and we're seeing, well, Chicago always has been a pretty good one to be in, but honestly, the buyers aren't really stopping here either. Swinging on over into the Cleveland side of things, last time around the floor is at $7, this time it's at $4.99, down 28.71%. The UPEX floor, $8,530 to $7,999, down 6.23% with an arbitrage of 3009 then we get to jump over into probably one of the most stable markets, I think, in existence. That would be Detroit right now. Uh, last time around, the floor was $3, and this time around, it's $3, and that's because you can't sell lower than $3, so that's where it lands, I guess. So we just got to stabilize at 3 As far as the UPEX floor, 3700 to 3700 completely unchanged with a very, very small arbitrage value of 700 Incredibly tight spread. Got to give a shout out to the uh, to the largest gainer on there, Sherwood Forest uh, Woodhood node. Anybody? Uh, you know, USD floor sixty six point six percent up, UPEX floor up a hundred and twenty five percent. Hashtag just saying. Swinging on the West Coast back over into Fresno. In Fresno, going from $8 down to $5.50, that's down 31.25%. Uh, on the UPEX floor, UPEX floor rather, $9,499 down to $799.9, whatever. Uh, down 15.79%. Arbitrage there, $2,499. Uh, decent movers all the way across the UPEX floor, still staying kind of okay. We're seeing this across a lot of the other collections here where the USD floor is kind of getting hit and the UPEX floor is staying stable. That's a good sign because it's showing that people aren't cashing out or they are cashing out, but they're not leaving the game per se. Why would they be cashing out? Well, we've got Rio around the corner. We've got cars. We've got Spark Week around the corner and we have a huge amount of new structures. Well, people need a lot of Spark and that can only really be bought in USD. 
something to consider, right? A lot of these USD floors are definitely getting slapped around. Speaking of slapped around, Kansas City is one that just constantly gets dumped on over and over. Every time there's a new city release or something like that, Kansas City or Nashville, those old school collections from days of old, are the ones that always get slapped, like Parkwood. You see get flashed up for like 60% markup or something crazy like that. These are these old ones that eventually they're not going to be around for those discounts anymore, and then they're going to go through the roof. For now, the USD floor, totally down across the board. People are USD hungry in Kansas City, Nashville, Las Vegas is going to be on the brunt side of this one because that's the most recent release that people are going to try to get liquid out of. These are going to be the ones that get slapped really hard. But like I said, eventually, there's not going to be any more left for them to dump out of. For now, Kansas City and Las Vegas and all of these other ones still have properties to be minted, so they're going to be on the forefront of getting the ugly stick, right? And this one is no different. That said, the USD floor, although it is negative all the way across, it only went from $6 to 526 on the floor, decreasing 12.33%. Compared to some of the others, it's not really that bad. The UPEX floor going from $94.99 to $75.55, that's down 20.47% there, but uh, arbitrage value between the two, $2,295, still not too bad at all. Las Vegas, we only have a few of the collections. We don't have all of them yet because Las Vegas is going to be a, a rolling launch, right? So these are the ones that we have for now. The previous floor was $5.50, now $5.25, down 4.55%. And on the UPEX floor, 9347 and 9499 up 1.63%. Not very many of them are up, except for Vegas and a few of the others doing pretty well there. Now, that all said, again, when Rio launches, I would expect things to change pretty quickly because Las Vegas, that is the most recent one. But, uh, you know, all things considered, I, I'm really curious to see what Rio's city rank comes out as. If it's a decent rank, at least rank three, possibly rank two, uh, then we might see liquidations in more places than just the most recent launches in Kansas City and all of the normal ones, because then you've got treasure hunters that are looking to liquidate as well. So it's something to kind of consider with Santa Clara as we get over there. Uh, we can kind of see that reflected in price a little bit too. Los Angeles, once again, is only visible from orbit, but I've got it down there in that corner. Uh, looking at the previous floor from $5.87 down to $4.99, only down 14.99%. Not too bad. The UPEX floor going from $74.99 to $7,300. Also, considering some of the others, not very bad there either. The thing with Los Angeles is that it's an incredibly expensive city in real life and in the metaverse. Everybody knows it, right? When you go to Los Angeles, you're going to spend $5,000 to sleep in a box. Like it's, it's ludicrously expensive in Los Angeles. And well, the collections and every property within there kind of follows along with that. These are some of the best collections that you can get your hands on and they're still mintable. Right? That's the thing with Los Angeles. Like We continuously see the UPEX floor staying relatively stable, kind of dip a little bit with new cities, of course, but then it rebounds right back up again. And that's because it's such an incredible spot for a lot of cash to get parked. It's a, a glorious spot for collections. And we see that reflected across the board here. Something to consider with Los Angeles as we go forward with all of these new cities and everything else. Then we can jump on over into Manhattan. Manhattan last time around was the $79 floor to $69 floor, down 12.66%. The UPEX floor was 100,000 UPEX, now 109,900, although there's been a lot of them jumping all over the place. I've seen some come on as low as 89,000. They're gone pretty quick. I've seen some jump on more around the normal and they hang out a little bit longer. At the time that I'm recording this, it's at 109,900, but that could change in an instant. It is up at the moment 9.9% with an arbitrary among one of the best at 40,900. Now we can jump over into Nashville going from $5.97 to $5.50 down 7.87%. The UPEX floor going from 84.50 to 84.84 actually up 0.4% with the arbitrage sitting between them at 29.84. Then over into New Orleans, we've got 595 going to 499 down 16.13%, 9900 to 9450 down 4.55%. But here's the thing, New Orleans has, I mean, a really, really good arbitrage. 4,460 is not bad at all. Some of the other collections are doing pretty well on the UPIC side of things, or at least not as bad as some of the others. But the arbitrage definitely has to be noted here. It is not bad right now. 
On the Oakland side of things, the floor going from $7.55 to $6.97. The Upix floor, $11,995 down to $94.99. That's down 20.81%. Arbitrage, kind of whatever, mediocre, $2,529. Nothing special here. But notably, the Upix floor in Oakland is getting trashed. And the USD floor is actually doing pretty well. We got a little bit of a flippy floppy going on here. Oakland's always been kind of a weird one in general and we're seeing it here as well it's just kind of flip-flop compared to some of the other ones but it is what it is swinging back on the east coast we've got back in queens 399 to 369 down 7.52 percent in the usd floor the upix floor though doing very very well going from 5000 to 5695 that's up 13.9 percent and looking at the bottom end of the collections on the upix floor maybe don't look at the queen's curator upix floor ouch uh but we've got 13 14 12 percent 24 percent these collections on the lower end in Queens are still doing remarkably well. The USD floor lifting up on some of the higher end collections too, so definitely not a bad market at all. And New York seems to be shoring up pretty nicely with the Bronx getting really ripping and in Brooklyn and some of these other ones that have always been kind of good markets. Queens is following right along with it. Then on a little bit over to the west of there, I guess northwest into Rutherford, we've got the floor prices were at $40, now at $42. That's a nice increase of 5%. Not very many of the USD floors going up, except for Rutherford and a few others. $50,000 on the UPEX floor going to $65,000, up 30% there with an arbitrage between them of $23,000. The collections are taking a little bit of a hit, but again, we've got, again, the USD side of things with Spark Week right around the corner. You kind of expect it. In San Francisco, the floor is going from $23.98 to $16, a big decrease there of 33.28%. The Epix floor going from $30,800 to $25,950. We do have a decent amount of movement going on here with some of the ultra rare collections going all the way up to Curator up to $10,000. And the Painted Lady, $62,000. And yes, that's USD to buy one of those bad boys. I mean, holy moly. So obviously we are seeing a little bit of a pullback here, but it's after all of the Genesis who and everything that was going on there but really think about this right where is all of the new car stuff taking off where are all of the new cars getting launched where did i have to go to get my race on with my new car i had to go to san francisco so these are some things to consider as they implement new features and new things into the game they tend to start in san francisco so it makes a lot of sense that this little pullback that we're getting right now is probably going to rebound back up nicely not to mention the fact that the arbitrage is really nice at 9950 these prices are hard to ignore and speaking of prices that are hard to ignore and speaking of the same context as to why santa clara that's where the plant is. That's where all of the vehicles are being produced. Santa Clara is also one of the best, if not, well, I mean, if it were tier one, it would be the best. One of the best treasure hunting maps that you can possibly ask for. It's so small and condensed that you can easily navigate around it. So when you see these big pullbacks, look at Santa Clara historically. The price floor is incredibly stable. It's one of the best looking ones out of all of them. All of them. And we have a nice little pullback here. Across the board, USD floor down uh, $25 to $17.99, down 28.04%. The UPEX floor, $35,468, down to $30,499. That's down 14.01%. Santa Clara is another one of those that has a rock solid arbitrage sitting at 12,509. But again, remember from a treasure hunter's perspective, that is a premier map to get your hands sunk into. And then finishing things up over in Staten Island. Staten Island's floor going from $10 to $5.89. Oh, geez. Maybe the island isn't doing so well in the New York side of things here, but that's down 41.1% getting walloped on that end. The UPEX floor going from 11200 to 7800 down 30.36%. And the arbitrage value, not that great right now. 1910 kind of disappointing. That said, the collections really aren't doing much either. Uh, we're seeing a bit of a pullback over in Staten Island and it's not doing too well. As far as the structure costs and spark costs and everything else, we just had a monstrous amount of new buildings and structures dumped on us that uh, are going to need some recalibrating and kind of working through. There's a lot of new prices. There's a brand new market, basically, for all of these, these new structures. Things are going to definitely get shaken up a little bit. So uh, I don't have any of that pricing right now because, well, it's, a, like I said, a brand new market and we've got to do some tweaking on that end. Uh, but we'll get to a little bit more on the structure side of things as we start seeing that market develop. 
All right, so that's going to do it for the weekend review. I hope you had a fantastic week so far in Upland with everything going on. It's been a madhouse of stuff going on. Uh, and hopefully your stacks are as thick as ever. Of course, I hope you have an incredible rest of your weekend. And as we go into the week ahead, we're going to have to keep our ears to the floor because we've got Spark Week and everything, but we've got a little bit of a lack of news, of new stuff. We know that there's Rio on the horizon. There's possibly new racetracks coming down the line, but it feels like it's almost the calm before the storm, and we don't quite know what the storm is yet. So just got to be a little bit cautious out there. It'll be interesting. I'm going to be throwing up a few more races here and there and trying to get a little bit more involved on that side of things, especially with some of these new tracks. We've already done a bunch of time trials in the uh, with the Upland Racing League, and I've got those all posted there. Really, really cool stuff going on the racing side of things and in the Woodhood in general. Aside from that, I hope you have a fantastic weekend. We'll see you all in the next. Thanks.